I have been an artist entrepreneur since I was a young teenager. I have spent my life making my own jobs and you can too. My name is Kathleen Laziza and I am the executive director of Micro Museum. This series is called Make It Your Own. It is designed to encourage people to use their talents for their own personal economic development. Because in 21st century America, there are no jobs. Nobody owes you a job. You have to make your own job. And this is what artists do every single day. This series is not advocating that you personally become an artist, but rather that you learn to think like an artist. Listen to these artists talk about their experiences. Episode four, everyone is a little different. Very early on, uh, as soon as I could hold a pencil. Or do you, do, is there artists in your in your family? No, or? no. Okay. There isn't. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, it really did start as a distraction. I definitely had a sense of like, um, you know, the music. Uh, the the moving nature of music and then language language that like touch people because I always saw people being moved by you know language so I don't even think it was like something like I kind of ingested I mean it became part of you know my DNA there is theoretical and figurative land that's out there or can be out there, just sort of, you know, beckoning to be discovered. At least that's how I feel. Um, and, and in that regard, I feel that some artists, they have the ability to either discover that land or almost create that new land out of something that didn't exist before. Um, and that gives us all the ability to discover it if they've created it and, you know, we can enjoy it or we can despise it, right? Because we don't all love all art that we see. I um, work to then create, like you're talking about, spaces, a way for people to um, engage with their own physical sensations. So I'm looking to stimulate other people's senses. My creative process has started to get broader as I get older, uh, where I'm often dealing with one small problem for weeks at a time that can be seemingly non-creative non and uh, obnoxious. Yeah, I think that's important. That's yeah. something I definitely try. I'm trying to, you know, in, in my family as well, make sure that my son yeah. hears lots of different music and. Uh, and it really is, it, it's pretty remarkable, especially to see the things that he likes and, and even now how he can even like sort of differentiate between what he does like and mm -hmm. what he doesn't like and certain mm -hmm. things that I, I don't know how, how much he realizes, you know, but I know like there's, like there's certain, in particular, horn players that when they start playing, when we're playing, you know, he just, he brightens up and I'm like, oh my. This is, you know, this, this is wild, you know, that he can tell the difference between whatever, you know, hearing Chet Baker and, and Miles Davis. Now, he doesn't really know the difference between them, but he can hear something different, and one thing will just immediately make him agitated, another thing will immediately start to make him smile. And, that, and that's you know? just seeing firsthand how powerful art Yes, is. art in general is, yeah. yeah. I agree. And, and also how universal it is, because it doesn't matter if you what language you speak, or yep. where you're from, or any of that. So I had one of those paint boxes, like many of us did as children. But I ate mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that counts. <laughs> In the 60s, everyone had a guitar. Right. That didn't make everyone a musician. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? So, the laptop to me or is a tool, Photoshop is a tool, all these things are tools. Mm -hmm. 
I always have this conversation with younger artists, like when they approach me about, like, you know, oh, what, what, what gear should I buy? I'm like, it doesn't really matter. Buy whatever you're comfortable with. What matters are the songs that you're writing. What matters is what you're trying to say. What do you consider to be a great first early creative experience in your life that started to define you as somebody who was going to take the path you've taken as an artist? When I learned I could get away with anything if I was in a costume. Somebody described me really sarcastically, like back in the day, and they were like, oh, you know, that's that politically correct poet or something like that. And I was like, I, you know, I think of myself <laughs> so not politically correct. Like I always feel um, half of the time I'm like terrified to say the things that I say. I admire when somebody says something and you're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I feel. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the thing that I do, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I find that, you know, a lot of artists, another reason why I thought Pioneer was a good way, it's not just so much breaking ground in your art, but I find a lot of artists are some of the first people who have a willingness to, to go out and live in underdeveloped or underserviced communities throughout our country or our world for that matter too. Um, you know, in some instances, I've known artists that they live in places too where a community has sort of yet to even form and it's sort of their willingness to go to these places helps that community and their culture to even start to spread. Here are three steps to remember. Step one. Frequently, we must ask ourselves why, but also why not? Step two. As you think about how to market your skills, also, develop a thick skin. Step three, people will question everything you do. It is up to you to prove them wrong. To learn more about this series, make it your own. Visit micromuseum.com.